Good afternoon. I'm really sorry I'm not with all of you today in Spain, but I'm really very much spiritually and in mind, my mind with you. Uh, congratulations on the wonderful conference. And I only wish I could have met there all the extraordinary people that I know are attending this conference. So my apologies for not being with you, but I am with you in many ways. What I would like to present to you today is really a very simple notion about how we can try to solve the communication and publication system of scholarship in general, of science in particular. From my perspective, it seems to me that the fundamental problem has been a growing divergence between scholarly communication and publishing. Researchers need to communicate and communicate often and intensely. They also need to publish and the publishing should complete the communication system, but it has come now to uh, act in a way which is no longer terribly beneficial for the uh, whole process of producing good, reliable, trustworthy knowledge. So what I would like to remind you is that scholarly publishing and communication used to be a quite, quite aligned at the very beginning of scientific publishing and communication in the early modern period. And scholarly communication was used to respond to real living, existing, bounded research communities. Nowadays, we have journals that respond to no community. They're just big prestige peaks and nothing else. And little by little, the functions of the publication um, in scholarship and science have been overtaken by other, consider other objectives. Remember that these used to involve registration, certification, preservation, dissemination, but now we also have the financial and commercial concerns of publishers. And in fact, the divergence has come from the fact that the publishers are trying to fit the uh, scholarly communication and publishing needs uh, inside a commercial or at least a financial framework. So as a consequence, what you have is um, issues of knowledge, reliability, quality, trust, local uh, relevance, etc., which are increasingly entangled with the quest for prestige, visibility, citability. The order of knowledge creation has to compose with the commercial concerns of many leading so-called journals. And finally, the journals, exactly in the line of what I just said, act more like a prestige building brand than as the expression of a community. So with this sort of ev evolution, which has really uh, started after the Second World War and really, really intensified in the last decade of the, of the 20th century, what have repositories offered? Well, repositories came as a potential solution for uh, all these questions, although they were not always uh, presented in that fashion, but I think they were trying to do many of the things that um, we need to do to respond to that uh, worsening situation. And what we, what we have is a, a, a solution which is both incomplete and sometimes even ambiguous. For example, what should repositories contain? They contain everything from courses, from even minutes of meetings, and of course, scholarly papers in various, at various levels of production. What should they represent? Are they for disciplines? Are they for problems? Do they just reflect institutions? Are they there for individual researchers and nothing else? Is it for all of that? We don't really know, and it changes from one repository to the next. How do they fit in the scholarly communication system? Do you know of researchers who actively lean and rest on the repository or repositories to communicate with other people? Sometimes perhaps a little bit, but it doesn't really play a central role, I believe. And how do they fit in the scholarly publishing system? Do they register? Not always. Certify? Rarely. Preserve? 
more or less disseminate oh well it's accessible it's open access it should disseminate by itself right well that's the problem it does not disseminate by itself and because of that of course responses emerge uh, to to try to to answer to these questions remember back in 1999 uh, even before the let's say the movement for open access the santa fe conference uh, design interoperability uh, with the OAI PMH uh, around uh, emerging repositories. Uh, in some institutions, the repository has become a, a deposit of reference for uh, the researcher in his assessment. But that's a double-edged blade because <laughs> researchers don't like to be assessed all that much. Uh, but this is what the so-called Liège model you have the notion that uh, Locke and Dempsey has presented at uh, OCLC, the inside out library, where the repository would become the place where you collect the local production to expose it to the world. Sort of, uh, instead of buying the stuff from outside into your own institution, you just collect and show the stuff out. It's an interesting thing, but it also essentially locks the repository into a somewhat isolated or institution bound uh, situation. And again, this is only a partial answer to some of the questions that have multiplied around repositories. And what we, uh, we should ask at the end is who really uses repositories to do research right now? That's the real issue. We have to somehow put the repositories at the center of the landscape of the researchers so that they spontaneously go there in some fashion to find what they need uh, and, and do what they want to do. So we need a number of key steps to bring the repositories to a new, new pitch, so to speak. And the main one is that a repository should never be considered alone. It has to network, it only works well if it is connected with other repositories. This is essential. A repository can belong to several networks that can be organized differently, but it's important to do, it's important to, to network all around this, um, this idea of uh, scientific communication and publishing. And the repository then can begin to do a number of things which have been in some ways um, neglected or perhaps uh, backgrounded to some extent. For example, we know that scientific communication requires an iteration of uh, productions of documents in order to arrive at something which can be used really by others. But in a sense, there is no reason to single out a particular version of this, of, of this movement, what you want to do is to know more or less where you want to fit yourself within the conversation that is going on around a question. This has been sometimes termed as replacing the version of record that uh, journal publishers hold on to very dearly for property reasons by what B Blanca, Bianca Kramer and Herun Bosman have called the record of versions. So the repositories could really be the place where recording how the versions are following each other, re recording in effect how the scholarly communication and discussion is going on is an important objective for enriched uh, new kinds of uh, repositories. Repositories should do open science, not just open, open access. So between the versions that I just mentioned, one should add immediately the data, the software, and everything that it go, comes into helping uh, doing the research in scholarship and in science. Now, repositories can standardize the relationships between these different elements that enter into creating a good solution for research. And finally, the network of repositories is uh, what should be used to brand the, um, the, the individuals, not an individual repository. 
in any case, an individual repository will never be able to brand by itself. So the network of repositories, if it needs to brand, and I think it does, because the researchers need symbolic capital, uh, they have to do it in a, in a network as broad as possible, as diverse as possible. But the branding of repositories should be rethought very, very fundamentally. It should involve uh, an accent on things like our knowledge is reliable, you can trust it, it's open, it's transparent, and it has been verified and checked and rechecked. It is trustworthy, it can be reused. So it's not a citation count that you're going to play with in these networks of repositories, but the trustworthiness of knowledge, which as you know, is one of the great stakes of our present civilization in a world of fake news and a great skepticism about the advances of science. Because of that, because what you're interested in is reliability, trustworthiness, reusability, the branding can include things that journals will never take on. Things like, this is a null result. I've done the work, it's, if you can check it, it yields a null result and I can't, we can't go much further than that, but don't do it again, it's been done. The same with the negative results, it's been done, don't do it again. So the, in this manner, repositories could be a tool to help make the whole process of uh, knowledge production more efficient and with uh, stages that are not endlessly repeated. Now, let's go turn to really what has been at the heart of, of the meeting here in Madrid, which is the news about Notify around, um, uh, around the repositories. Now, to me, Notify, which is still, I think, a, a somewhat open-ended uh, vision of what should be added to, to the repositories, but the main aim of Notify, it seems to me, is to structure various kinds of repository networks how they are interconnected, how their internal dynamics uh, are uh, organized to provide various functions. And the literature that circulates around Notify mentions functions and services such as peer review endorsement, some dissemination capacity, including, I would add, across languages, which is becoming really important. It could, uh, I could add to that Again, the notion of community expansions, uh, the notion of uh, particular efforts or interdisciplinary links, perhaps um, doing specific networks around, we share the same kinds of apparatus and we would like to improve these apparatus and their evolution. And perhaps also through those networks, do something that the LOX project was, has been doing for a long time, these repositories could work together to uh, achieve long-term preservation. And in passing, you can see that in so doing, repositories are starting to encroach very, very deeply into the kingdom of not only communication of scholarship, but also the publication of scholarship. The second, the second thing that, um, uh, Notify can help doing for the repositories is, as I've said earlier, offering valuable symbolic capital to the researchers. Um, again, I'm going to insist on trusted knowledge with clear provenance. Keep in mind something like when you buy a painting and you want to, and it's quite cheap, but you find out it's a Matisse or a Cezanne or something like that, and you want your millions of dollars out of it, you'll need to show provenance. Well, trusted knowledge requires provenance and that, that the repositories are very well positioned to, to, to give. They give reliable knowledge and advertise it and say it and contrast it with what the journals are doing. Bjorn Brems who gave the, um, the, the keynote in this uh, conference has written a wonderful article about the fact that the journals with um, uh, high impact factors are among the least reliable journals. This is you know, a remarkable result to, to contemplate, but at the same time, it's a sorry comment on what science and scholarship is undergoing these days. It Notify can really work on providing 
services that guarantee that the knowledge is reusable, you can go to our sources, don't, no problem there. And it can also redefine the notion of relevance in a variety of, issue, of ways by uh, leading to issues at various scales. For example, issues such as health, you know it now with the pandemic, climate change or food are largely universal project, uh, problems. Um, the wheat not being sent out of Ukraine is going to affect the food supply of many countries that are going to have very difficult problems in the next few months. But you also have relevance to local problems, which are not uh, found in any place else, except that the solutions to these local problems may rest on theories, on, on concepts, on tools, whatever, which can be reapplied in other local problems or universal problems. It can be a relevance to theoretical developments. It can be a relevance to issues that are meta science or meta scholarship, such as the diversity of the researchers, the inclusiveness of the researchers and their perspectives, or the notion, notion such as sustainable development wherever it's needed. I would say that also not if I can really stress something that should be really really reasserted very strongly. It's the notion of real innovation. Right now, when people try to publish, particularly in high impact factor journals, what they try to do really is say, hey, look, surprise, I found something unusual. Isn't that great? Is that real innovation? Is the surprise novelty uh, the equivalent of real innovation? I do not believe so. I think Notify can is essentially refocus our glances, our way of looking at the world a bit more seriously beyond the frivolity of what's going on right now with journal rankings and their competition. Now, let me conclude with all, all of this because I think I've already spoken way too long. And I think Kathleen Scherer is going to really fret if I continue like this. But uh, 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 despite that, I will just quickly finish. It seems to me that the core Notify vision rests on a, a set of objects such as repositories, overlay journals, if you want to call them that way, building the, of a wide variety of networks that make, in effect, the old green gold divide completely obsolete, thank God, at last. The core Notify vision should also help scholarly communication and scholarly publishing to converge again, to work together, to be harmoniously supporting each other. The core Notify vision can provide a strong and convincing response to the present state of skepticism and attacks on scholarly and scientific knowledge. The core Notify vision provides a strong underpinning to the very processes of knowledge creation by offering, and that's why I think it should focus on, by offering support and tools for every one of the facets of those processes. In other words, through the espousing of the discussions and the debates and the organization of production of knowledge, the Notify addition to the repositories would finally allow people to jump into a discussion, find themselves in the right position to immediately engage with really what counts regarding this, this discussion and contribute to its advancement. This is called, I'm sorry, it's old fashioned, but I, I still think it's relevant. It's called scientific progress. So in a sense, and I, this will be my last word, the Notify project of core can qualify as the blueprint for what I'd like to call earlier in the different paper, the internet of the mind. And I believe that the internet of the mind is not, nothing more than uh, what people can build on top of the technical internet to achieve H.G. Wells' wonderful vision of a world brain. Thank you.